Crossroads Media. I want to really get into the thick of the deadline. And I'm starting to get annoyed because on a day-to-day basis over the last week, I've been dealing with way too many prospect huggers, and it's unsettling. The Phillies are in a position to go after a huge addition at the deadline. A Mason Miller who can gun 104-103 and reach back every single pitch to blow it by you. you. You don't even see it. You don't even see the ball. He is going to throw it down your throat. You can have Brent Rooker, a perfect right-handed bat for what this team needs. So what? The defense takes a hit. You put him in left field, you put Marsh in center, and then Rojas can be what he is supposed to be with where he's at in his career, which is a defensive replacement and someone who can run the bases in a pinch run situation to maybe take advantage of some speed when needing a run. The last thing I'm going to do is hold back because you're afraid that Aiden Miller, a guy you had no idea who he was two years ago, I'm not staying put and just getting marginally better because of a prospect who you had no clue who he was. And the reason I say you have no clue who he was and why that matters to this convo Because Dave Dombrowski is going to get the next Aiden Miller that you will want to hug within the next draft. Same with Andrew Painter. Same with Justin Crawford. There will be a time where the next Andrew Painter, Aiden Miller, Justin Crawford are in your prospect pool. And you'll get just as excited about them. What bothers me about the huggers is this. Every single time they project a prospect to be good, they become elite. When in fact, most of the times, they either flop or they're okay. For example, J.P. Crawford is playing in Seattle. He's okay. 240 hitter. I believe he's been in the majors for about nine years now. Guess what? If you trade J.P. Crawford, you're okay. Look at the Phillies now. The only way this stings is if Aiden Miller is Juan Soto, is Bryce Harper, is Aaron Judge. And I'm sure the ones who don't want to trade him right now are saying he is that. Please. That's 2% of the league. It's funny. When you bring up Jazz Chisholm, Everyone says, eh, not that good. When someone brings up Cody Bellinger, eh, too inconsistent. When someone brings up Brent Rooker, for example, eh, it took him too long to get going. I'm afraid he's only done it for one year. He's 29. He's finally breaking out. Oh! Oh! Interesting. You're telling me Brent Rooker was a top pick that people thought would dominate maybe a little bit earlier, but took him a a long time and a while to find his groove? Oh, well, he's at his groove now. So if we could plug that in to this team who's ready to win now, that makes sense. And it won't ruin the sustainability of this franchise and trying to create success years from now. So I I, I just, I don't get it because if you're unwilling to part ways with them, then what are we doing here? Are you excited about, I don't know, what's some names that I jotted down over the last week or so? Lane Thomas, which is a right-handed bat, and I brought that name up in the past before I went all in on making the big splash. When I was still teetering and wondering what I wanted to do, sure, Lane Thomas, a a fair, respected right-handed bat to platoon with Brandon Marsh, who isn't going to face lefties, I could live with that. 
But I'm in all-in mode now, and I want to go after this thing. And by the way, these wouldn't be rentals. This is within the window of your 10-year contracts you're throwing around. Your Bryson Stotts, your Alec Bohms. I mean, Bryce Harper's here forever. Trey Turner's here forever. Aaron Nola signed a big deal. Zach Wheeler got an extension. Bohm and Stott aren't going anywhere. Brandon Marsh is still young in range. So this window shouldn't be closing anytime soon. So I keep hearing that, well, all these guys are getting older because they're over 30, and then you need some new ones to sort of replenish that, and Bryce is going to be a D8. Whoa, whoa, Bryce isn't going to be a D8 at 34, 33. Because Aiden Miller, Trey's playing short. Aiden Miller, what? What what position is he playing? Because Bohm going over to first means then Bryce Harper isn't playing the field every day. The only time you're getting Bryce Harper to DH mode is probably when he's 37 years old. You're going to have to rip him off that field with his ears and drag him across the dirt. I don't understand the timeline of the huggers, of the prospect huggers. But I wrote down the names that I was thinking. And where is it? Oh, Tanner Scott, Lane Thomas. And if you look at the track record of Dave Dombrowski at the deadline, when there are some teams that he had in place at the top, at the deadline, more times than not, you have those type of moves more so than the David Price, which we've seen him accomplish, so it's not out of the question, but he leans more towards these type of moves. Scott Lauber also mentioned when I had him on my show yesterday that don't be surprised if maybe he finds a way to get a back-end starter that can help eat some innings because they are concerned about the innings pitched for Ranger Suarez. He's never been a 200-inning type of guy. He is on pace to crack 200 innings. Christopher Sanchez has not been someone who has been a a full-on starter like this. The innings catch up to you. So maybe in August, there's a six-man rotation. I'm not sure how Zach Wheeler is going to necessarily love that, but if he's dealing with some sort of back tightness and back spasms and back issues, then maybe there's nothing you can do other than recognize I got to find a way to, uh, to, to... Get to the finish line. And not only get to the finish line, but dominate once I'm at the finish line. All I know is I'm in favor of trading Aiden Miller. I'm in favor of trading Andrew Painter. Now, I'm more willing to stay with Andrew Painter and take a risk on what his ceiling could potentially be. And it's not like... If I move on from them, I expect Aiden Miller to stink. But even if, let's just say, he becomes a Bryson Stott-like player, right? Like, major leaguer, fun player. If your organization can't handle losing a Bryson Stott, then there's probably deeper issues. Because while Bryson Stott is a nice player, franchise changing to the point where it breaks you down to your core if you trade him and get a proven nice player back in return. If you swapped out Bryson Stott for Brent Rooker, different positions, but if you were to do that, you should be okay. And more times than not, This is what those prospects become. When you are a team that's going for it, you take a look at those prospects, you bottle them up, and you go after it. That's what you do. This isn't 20-whatever anymore where it's about who's going to help change the franchise five years from now because you're watching Tommy Joseph, because you're watching Cesar Hernandez and Mike Alfranco. And Sean Rodriguez. There was once a time where these prospects meant more. But as we watch this run continue, and I'm not just talking about this year, the window is open for a bit of time now. The job of Dave Dombrowski is not only to keep this team competitive in the now, 
But while we watch another two, three playoff runs, because, I mean, two years from now, I better see this team still competing. I just watched the Houston Astros go on a billion ALCS runs. They're in the ALCS year after year after year after year after year after year. year. That's what I expect this team in the National League to do. I want you all to realize what's at stake here. I don't like hearing, you don't need to make a big move because you're already the best team. Mm, That's scary. That's scary. Because then others have the opportunity to go for it. What you're doing is taking your foot off the gas. And it reminds me of, because most of us are Phillies fans and Eagles fans, if the Eagles were up 30, Heading into the second half, <laughs> for for some reason, this hypothetical was, you're up 30 after the first half. And in the second half, take your foot off the gas. Before you know it, it's 30 to 14. 30 to 17. The other team kicks a field goal. You hold them to a field goal. You feel it's a moral victory. They feel it's a moral victory. Now here, we're entering the fourth quarter. They kick another field goal, 30 to 20. Took your foot off the gas. I want to go for the jugular. 